This is Jay Martin. I want to uh, pivot to the idea of central bank issued digital currencies. You've been speaking about this. Correct me if I'm wrong. You've been speaking about it in the context that this could be or create one of the biggest wealth transfers of our generation. Um, can you walk me through that thesis a little bit, Nomi? So, so the main thing about a central bank digital currency and, and specifically the Fed or the larger central banks creating their own currencies is that to an extent it will disable the middleman of the banking system. Now, that's not to say that all of your bank accounts are going to go over to the Fed. The, the logistics of that would be nightmarish. But yeah. Um, in terms of opening accounts, accounts down the line, tracking transactions, bypassing uh, the private banking system, and the private banking system, therefore, is not actually in favor of a central bank digital currency because effectively they know it can take business away from them. That can happen. And that's one of the reasons why um, the Fed's pushing it gives the Fed more control over the creation of digital currency. I mean, we're just talking about gold for a second. It's way easier to create a digital currency than create gold, right? So, mm -hmm. I mean, they can have their foot in both in both areas, but the reality is it's it's, it's far easier um, to both create and to track transactions. And that includes taxation. That includes just, just anyone's transaction um, and to take some of the um, sort of customer base. Ultimately, and this is not a tomorrow thing, but ultimately from the private banking system. And what that does as a whole is it, it actually solidifies the power of central banks. And, and that's one of the reason why, um, even though I think central banks um, basically were behind the prevalence of Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency market in general, um, in terms of development, and, and perhaps that spurred them to, to push development of CBDCs more quickly than they otherwise would have, they would offer central banks, again, that much more power. It would. And I think that's okay. So that makes more sense to me when I hear people talk about central bank issued digital currencies, and they're opposed to them. The most common opposition I hear from a dystopian outlook is that these are going to become massive surveillance tools. They're current, they're surveillance tools disguised as a currency. And I understand that concern. And I don't like it. Having said that, I feel like that ship sailed a decade ago. If you're on Apple, Google, Facebook, Instagram, Heaven forbid TikTok. Mm -hmm. Everything we're saying right now, even if we're not recording, it's being recorded. My phone has to hear everything I say, just in case I say, hey, Siri, and then it can turn on, right? Mm -hmm. And so we know this is occurring. We know our keystrokes and our key rhythms are being recorded. Everything I type to you, everything, every email I type is being recorded and analyzed, right? Our IP addresses, regions. So the surveillance ship, like, give me a break. We accepted this a long time ago. And I kind of feel like that's just a head fake and doesn't, it, like it doesn't, so we get absolute visibility into all transactions with CBDCs. Well, we're pretty much there anyways, right? Like maybe there's the odd thing that, that they're not seeing, but like what, I mean, I don't think that's the real threat. Uh, do you think I'm missing something there, Nomi? Because like I said, I feel like that ship sailed a decade ago. And all of a sudden, now we're making a stink about it, but we've already accepted that outcome. What do you think? You know, it's funny when, as you're as you're talking and, and throwing up your phone there. I um, so last night I had some friends over and we were you know kind of chatting. And I've I've got probably listening to this conversation right now. I've got Google set up, you know, to do things around my house. Yeah. And um, and one of them couldn't find their phone. And then like two minutes, you know, it's like, where's my phone? Literally, where's my phone? It wasn't even me. And then like two minutes later or less, I get a message on my phone saying like. You know, something to the effect of if you have trouble finding your phone, this is a way to help you. And it's like, wait a minute, it wasn't me. Yeah. I didn't even say it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, doesn't so, matter, does it? It just doesn't matter. I and mean, we all know this. We all know things we say then get followed around by advertisements and things that can help us quote unquote and whatever. And and, that, and you're right, that 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 has been happening, that will continue to happen. It's also the case where the private banks, the big banks, are so connected to the government that, for example, if you're late on your tax bill you will get your bank account basically, you know, frozen garnished. Yeah. Uh, or garnished or whatever um, in order to pay that bill at a point. So, and, and that relationship like this has existed for a long time. So on all those basis is that the, the, our lives and our desires to potentially be separate from what we say and do financially with, with how much they are actually connected uh, to banks and to the government um, is just not the same. And you're right, I mean, that aspect, the ship has, has sailed. Um, I, I think the, and you know, as I said before, the, the main thing that uh, a CBDC does 
is is give that much more power to to a central bank in terms of the ease of creation of money it mm. does give power into that central mechanism if, if it wants to to aggregate or 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 track transactions that yes it could anyway that google can do that apple can do that that chase knows or Citigroup knows or bank of america knows yeah um, these things are all true you know what what it does is kind of centralize some of that it doesn't add, it doesn't change it. It just it just it's another spot where um, that information can be centralized. So it's not, but it's not the thing that I think is driving um, the evolution to CBDCs. I think the thing that's driving it is this ability as as our technologies change, as as this field of what I call new money, which is crypto, it's Bitcoin, it's PayPal, it's just everything across the chain uh, changes relative to traditional banking. That central banks perceive themselves to need a way to control more of um, what's going out there from, from a sheer currency perspective, a, a creation of um, you know, quantitative easing perspective, whatever it might be to have just sort of more control with respect to the uh, what is now a broader banking system, yeah. um, including traditional and non-traditional DeFi financial mechanisms. And I think that power drive, um, whether they articulate it or not, whether central banks articulate or not is is the number one um, reason. And actually the thing we should most fear rather than the tracking of um, what we're buying and when we're buying it relative to a CBDC. I 100% agree with you there. And I want to jump into that. And first I have one more like opposing question to this. And this is, do you remember that super high functioning technology platform that was rolled out at scale that was created by a government? Like that ever happened before? <laughs> well, they're not that efficient. Um, <laughs> they have, like, again, are they, they have the ones to build it? To to. Right, right. No, that, that that that's exactly right. They 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 can create money when they need to. They can borrow money when they need to. They can trade the debt. They can trade the currencies. They can do all that. But uh, the efficiency is, is is not increased by by all that power. Right. I mean, I just I just don't see the leadership actually executing on this effectively. And, uh, and that's the biggest barrier. I mean, what we're talking about here is maybe the biggest tech project at scale ever, ever uh, attempted, right? And maybe one or two, I know there's like 100 countries working on their CBDCs right now, Canada included, Payments Canada is building one out. But it's easy to put that on your website. It's a different thing to roll out uh, a V1 product. And so I just like, how, Nomi, how would suddenly our leadership, our, our governments become so competent that they could actually execute on a project like this at scale and have it work. I mean, I, I just can't think of a previous example or even one that's close. Well, I mean, uh, yeah, what's close um, is not so previous. It's, it's you know, when, when, when the dollar, for example, was, was invented, when, when basically, you know, you, you took a bunch of bank notes across a bunch of banks, across a bunch of regions and states, et cetera, across the country that were all trading with each other. And, and, and one bank note meant something in one city and nothing in another and so forth. And, and you had this sort of centralization of the currency. But I mean, that, that's ultimately what you're talking about. You're talking about a once in a, I don't know, a couple of centuries of that. Um, we might be faster to that now because we it is a technology driven um, possibility and event. But 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 I think I think the main thing is, even if there is a CBDC from a technological perspective, how much will that become standard to all of our lives? And I think that, you know, as you're saying, is, is something that you, you have to imagine is not going to happen overnight um, right. or potentially for, for, for decades or, or, or if ever. Right. So I think I think that's what we're talking about. We're talking about the evolution of the dollar um, or a currency of that nature, you know, the pound beforehand, et cetera, but, but um, mostly the dollar because it came out of a, a fractured group of other types of, of, bank, of bank and backed notes. Um, but, it, but again, I think the technology is there. I think it can happen, but, but the idea that it's going to happen overnight um, is really giving a lot of credit to, to this environment um, right. you know, that, that operates inside the Fed or inside the government. I mean, I think these things just take, they take um, time. 